thank you for the introduction and thank you Patrick for inviting me. Uh, it's great to be here. This is uh, my second time in Vancouver and already it's fast becoming my, one of my favorite cities. So I'm going to start with a statement uh, which I'd like you to spend at least a few seconds thinking about. The most powerful tool for transforming cities is technology, design, money, politics, something else. It's our mind. And you might wonder why is it our mind? It's because ultimately what changes the world are really our ideas and how we think about things, including how we think about the design of cities. This is an image of one of the most amazingly designed places in the world. It's the favela called Hosinia in Rio de Janeiro. And this thinking about in what ways is our mind the most powerful tool for the transforming cities begins with a very apparently simple but very effective question, what can urbanism be? Not necessarily what is urban design, but what can urbanism be? This question has a number of characteristics. First of all, it's future oriented rather than only looking at the past and present. It builds on the past and present but looks to the future. Second, it embraces plurality. We don't have to have one single answer to every question. We can have multiple answers and it's all right. In fact, it's better. But perhaps the most powerful thing about this question is that it embraces this possibility of reinvention. That we can, given the nature, the changing nature of cities and the world, we can reinvent how we do things with cities. And there's one realm in which our mind engages in very profound and sophisticated ways regarding the future of cities, and that is theory. And some of you might be wondering, uh, who are practitioners like me, hardcore nuts and bolts, what does theory have to do with it? Well, theory is a systematic way of understanding larger patterns of how things work or don't work of understanding what kinds of strategies do work or don't work. And I'm not talking about best practices, I'm talking about deeper underlying principles, beliefs and values that drive what we do. And there's certain kinds of theories which are particularly effective in this context. One set of theories is how a city works and looks. So not just the spatial organization of a city, but how does a city work in terms of social dynamics, in terms of its performance, in terms of uh, its economics. Another one which uh, I think is often overlooked are underlying human values. What do we value? What do we cherish? Why is it that for many years we cherished the automobile and designed our cities around automobile? And I know it had to do with policies, etc. but there's also a set of values as a society that we bring to our cities. So what do we value? What do we want to value collectively about the future of our cities? And finally, all this occurs in a larger structure, the spatial political economy, which is really the power structure through which decisions are made. Political structures, economic structures. And power is uneven. Let's remember that. Power is distributed uneven. There are people, groups, uh, organizations that have more power to influence cities, and others have much less power. Similarly, uh, there are people who have access to resources and others who have less access to resources. So understanding the larger system is essential in this theoretical framework. So a question comes up, what can theory do for urbanism and its practice? Well, first of all, theory has to be of a certain kind, as Kevin Lynch wrote in his great book, uh, Good City Form, uh, which is actually a very sophisticated book. It seems apparently simple. It's now over 20 years old, uh, but it's very sophisticated. And one of the things he talks about in that is theory has to be of a certain kind to be useful. It can't be too esoteric, but can't be too pedestrian. It has to be uh, a certain guide to action. And in this thinking that comes out of my research and my practice, there's a certain kind of theory, actually a philosophy, that I found particularly effective in two ways. One, to understand the messy and complicated nature of our world, and hence the messy and complicated nature of our cities. And second, to understand the true potential of urbanism as a field and as a practice. 
And that's the philosophy of pragmatism, which is about, it's a philosophical movement that started in the late 19th century, so it's about 150 years old. Hundreds of books have been written about it. And in my practice, I've been reading about this, and I found it actually much more insightful than some of the architecture, urban design, or planning theories that I learned as a student. So a couple of things about pragmatism. So the most powerful thing about pragmatism, it's thinking about thinking. That's metacognition. So it's thinking about how we think about cities and challenging those assumptions that we take for granted. That's a very effective and powerful shift to, uh, to take place. And pragmatism has a number of principles which I won't describe uh, fully. Uh, Anti-foundationalism, social character of knowledge, contingency, experimentation, pluralism. But to get you, give you a feel of the kind of thing that pragmatism talks about, anti-foundationalism is the notion that ideas do not exist in a vacuum. An idea about the future of cities, for example. Ideas emerge out of specific contexts and histories. And also what anti-foundationalism says, so ideas don't last forever, they're not pure. They emerge out of specific contexts. I think that's very important to keep in mind, whether it's notions of sustainability uh, or good design, etc. The other thing anti-foundationalism says is ideas uh, last over time, not because they are pure, but because they can adapt. And in the 21st century, as things are changing very rapidly, often in ways that we may not understand totally, how do our ideas adapt to this changing reality? So based on this, uh, the philosophy of pragmatism, my own practice for the last 20 years all over the world, my own research, I've come up with three fundamental shifts in the theory and practice of urbanism. And this is specifically from a design perspective. The first shift I'm proposing is beyond intentions. The actual, looking at the actual consequences of design. Not just looking at what we want to do, what designers want to do, but what are the actual consequences, including unexpected consequences, which can be both positive and negative. The second shift I'm arguing for is beyond practice. So the practice of urbanism, not just something that you do as a professional or uh, as a practitioner, but urbanism as a creative political act. Because the city is a political phenomena. And I, by politics, I don't mean just politics with the big M of the mayor, city council, etc., but the everyday politics of dealing with communities and the dynamics between different groups. The third shift uh, I argue for is beyond objects. Again, this is from a design perspective. Understanding that the city has flux. The city is a constantly changing phenomena. This is something that urban historians and urban geographers have been saying for a long time. But how do we, as designers, urbanists, and practitioners, actually engage with a city that's constantly changing? That we're not just designing spaces, buildings, infrastructure, and objects, but how do we engage with cities that are constantly changing, even as we speak, second by second, minute by minute, not to speak of year by year and decade by decade? So, the relationship between cities, transformation, urbanism, uh, just a few things to highlight. One is the spirit of pragmatism as an ongoing social inquiry. What pragmatism says, essentially, we don't know everything. Yes, we know a lot, but there's a lot we don't know. So this ongoing social inquiry through the dialectics of developing theories and deeply reflective practice, this kind of back and forth, constantly practicing, testing your ideas, and reflecting on them, and modifying your practice as an ongoing dialectical process. Ultimately, what I'm saying is that we can transform cities by fundamentally transforming how we think about and practice urbanism itself. So, transformation at the nexus of theory and practice. Uh, I'm giving you just a very short feel for something that I've written about. Like I said, this is based, I'm coming out of this, out of 20 years of practice. This is a book that came out last year, Designing Urban Transformation. And this is just the beginning of redefining urbanism itself. Please join us in this conversation online uh, by Twitter and please uh, we would like to welcome you to New York City to continue this conversation. Thank you. <laughs>